So the rock cycle is great and all for some theoretical discussions of where we're going to get these conditions, but where in nature are we going to really see some of these changes between one phase of rock into a different phase of rock? Well, this is a great diagram that the USGS, United States Geologic Survey, came up with. And it shows a, a subduction zone and other areas where there are processes to create various types of rocks. Um, you can see that at the mid-ocean ridge, which is where we have new crust being formed, we have igneous rocks being formed, and those would be extrusive igneous rocks because the lava is making it to the Earth's surface. Um, then over on the land, we see we have mountains, and anywhere we have mountains, we're going to have streams. So those streams are eroding the mountains and bringing down sediment into the shallow ocean area. Those uh, sediments are being deposited on the ocean floor, and then eventually they will be lithified to create sedimentary rocks. So you can imagine that we'll see sedimentary rocks form near the coasts. And then if we look down where the metamorphism is happening, we can see that the oceanic lithosphere is being subducted underneath the continental lithosphere. And as we have subduction, you can imagine that we have vast amount of heat and pressure. We have all of that overbearing weight from the continental crust. And as we go deeper in the earth, we have much more pressure. So that pressure is changing the oceanic lithosphere, which is mostly composed of basalt, like we said earlier, into something else that's a more stable rock. If that rock gets taken down far enough, then it melts completely and begins to rise again as uh, liquids do, as liquids that are not as dense as solids do, and maybe it'll rise all the way to the surface to form an extrusive igneous rock, or maybe it will stop some way, somewhere under the surface to form an intrusive igneous rock. So this is a really great real-life example of some of the places that you'll find different types of rocks, and really what you could deduce from the existence of them.